Greetings, Chester here, music composer for 45Y Music, and uh, today we're going to be doing a deep dive on Spitfire Audio's Contemporary Drama Toolkit. So I'm going to walk through some tips and tricks and uh, help you out and try to find a way to get it uh, integrated seamlessly into your uh, composer template or DAW, however you're working. So let's get started. We're going to start uh, going over the library here. Less theory, more feeling. That's how we get it marketed to us. Not so much uh, music theory, less of. Uh, we'll still be using that, but uh, less menu diving, less worrying about uh, all the options in front of us and more composing and working on our music. It's kind of what, what they're saying here. And uh, Samuel, Samuel Sim is uh, the composer that they worked with and collaborated with on this library uh, as well as others and his name is popping up a lot uh, not only in spitfire audio world but i'll see his name uh, in some movies or, or some things that i'm seeing or streaming and um he's awesome he's he's definitely not someone to sleep on so if you um hear of his name or hear about him check him out and uh this is no exception to the rule this library is pretty fantastic all right um it, this kind of talks about it a little bit. There's uh, some synth options here, um, guitar, cello, uh, violin, vocals, and uh, analog effects, vintage pedals, Euro rack. We're going to talk about that a little bit and, and how that all applies. <clears throat> uh, the details uh, of this video will have a link to this page, so definitely check it out and uh, take a look at the videos and, and videos others have been posting. Um, a lot is out there on this library. We're going to get down to the bottom here. All right, so now we're looking at what's included. Uh, one thing I'll note here is that if you're looking for something specific like synth bases, uh, I need a, a library for just synth bases. I would not buy this library for that purpose. I would go get like Trillion or I would go get a, synth, a, a library focused on synth bass. Uh, similar like guitars, like ambient guitars is a guitar library. Um, cinematic guitars is a guitar library. I, I wouldn't just buy this library and say, oh, I got guitars, I'm good. Um, it's not really what this library would be intended for. It's really great to layer um, with other libraries. Its strength is that speed to value, um, getting ideas down and getting them out um, or getting them in a good place to bring in other libraries and build them up. Um, that's kind of where you would want this library. Um, so not any specific instrument in particular, but the whole library as a whole to get your sketches going, get your ideas going, and uh, add more to it. But a great selection, uh, you get you get a good uh, combination of, of sounds and, and sources and instruments here, though. Um, I will say that. A couple more videos here, and then down at the bottom, we got tech specs. Um, so if you meet these requirements on your system, you're going to be good to go. Uh, the file size is generous at 28 gigabytes. Um, if that sounds big to you, it's not. Um, that's actually pretty generous. Uh, a lot of libraries are a lot bigger. So um, for the price point, we don't get to see the price here, unfortunately, but um, it's definitely worth it in that regard. And then you need contact or a contact player, this version or higher, and you'll be set. And then I think in the timing of this uh, recording, I saw the flash deal is still going on. You got it roughly under three hours. Uh, to save 50% on a library of your choice. I think this is a candidate, Contemporary Drama tr Toolkit. So uh, if you catch it in time for Flash 50, um, it's a good option for you. Uh, if you find that what we go over is is something that will work for you. If not, there are others. Um, and then if uh, this sale is over by the time you see this, just wait for another one. Um, Spitfire has a lot of sales. And I, I got this on a sale and I did wait for that sale. Um, even at 30% off, um, this library you'll, you'll find as long as you use it, it, it'll be worth it to you. All right. So let's talk about some caveats and, and some pain points that we have with this library and, and how to remedy some of those, um, and make this library work for you. Uh, let's the base synth base is a great example, uh, to hit a few of these pain points. So I'm going to open it up, uh, in contact here. <clears throat> And uh, the first thing I'm going to say is um, Christian Hansen, when you start watching uh, his video uh, where he scores a trailer um, and then Hame's video where she scores a trailer, 
uh, she mentioned that Christian provided this technique as well, but it's um, uh, an effect to affect the pitch over time slowly. And that's a really smart and awesome technique and trick for us when we're working with synthesizers, kind of especially. Uh, a lot of things, though. Um, you, you can modulate that pitch over time. And um, you can get some really cool uh, sounds and effects, especially when you duplicate the patch and then you let you leave one kind of alone and the other one kind of um, change pitch subtly. Um, there's a lot of really great results in that. And so I was like, well, what a great uh, idea. I'll just use the pitch bend on uh, the MIDI controller. And to no surprise, because this is notorious with uh, Spitfire libraries, it's not set up for that. So... Rather than uh, adding a plugin like Christian does, I did this. I click uh, the wrench. Uh, you select group editor, editor up here. Uh, you got to make sure edit all groups is so all your groups are selected here. And then scroll down and you're going to see mod here under source. Click that. And then add modulator external sources pitch bend. You click that. This option will pop up. And now you can bend. You can bend pitch with the pitch bend or um, setup automation in your DAW. You're good to go. And then this slider here, uh, intensity of pitch bend. So how many semitones you want to bend the pitch. Uh, I left it alone. I thought that was just fine because I'm doing it subtly anyways. So that was one pain point. Um, and then... Uh, Feature request, if if anyone Spitfire ever watches, uh, give us either pitch bend control or, or a setting somewhere in one of these. That would be cool. Like right here or something. Um, monophonic uh, for synth bass specifically. Um, let me bring it down a little bit so we can hear that. Yeah, low note. Um, the pulses is a big strength of this library, synth pulses. A lot of uh, ideas and, and compositions out there were using synth pulses um, as drones or as pedal tones, and uh, it, it works really well for that. But it's polyphonic, the synth bass patches are, and I wanted it monophonic. So I got a Max for Live patch to make it monophonic through MIDI. If there are any contact pros out there that know how to make it monophonic with contact, uh, if you could put a comment below with maybe a link to some resources on that or write it out or hit me up and, and if a video is needed, we can do that because um, doing it in contact would be awesome. But uh, that's that was another thing that I would have liked to have seen because um, it would have been fun to work with like some glide settings maybe or, or portamento or, or something like that like a, a synth would have, um, but we don't have those options uh, available to us. So... I just added a max for live uh, patch, but uh, if you have the ability to set monophonic um, in the MIDI before it hits contact in another DAW or another way, uh, it's a good option for you. That way you're not getting into some of the, the issues of timing or um, making a, a messy, muddy bass um, idea. All right, so that was one thing. Another thing was the, this is known throughout Spitfire community, um, but sometimes their sounds can be softer than other libraries. Uh, so I had parallel compression, um, even adding uh, some distortion plugins like, um, where is it, Little Radiator, even just throwing that in uh, somewhere. It can beef up the bass a bit more uh, and make it really aggressive, adding some other distortions or anything like that. Um, definitely suggested so you can get a, a thicker synth bass sound. You'll want to do that, <clears throat> but it can get there. And then, uh, another pain point here that was solved. Not sure what happened here, why, um, Spitfire did this, but, uh, they released it without adding the key switches. They kind of said that it's on the user to do that, um, because there's like a couple patches that um, can overlap on the key switches. So they sent it without them, um, and then it's on us. So there's kind of a standoff here because that is fine, but you did say that this is out of the box ready for us, and then if we're going to have to do this, it's kind of, not saying it defeats the purpose, but 
I don't know. All right, we'll do it. And this is how you do it. So uh, you got to find, yeah, it's the wrench. You'll click that here this time, not the, not the one up here, but the one here. And then you're going to unlock articulations. You'll hit that. And then this, these red options will drop down on the keyboard and you can use this to slide uh, left and right. So slide them all the way over to the left and then they're out of the way. Otherwise, maybe some patches, yeah, there's probably some room up here in the top as well, uh, where you want to place your, your key switches. Um, and I think maybe in planning, I don't know if, if Spitfire thought like where they could put it or, or what else, but it seems like a, a market thing, like right at the end there, they discovered and they're just like, oh gosh, what are we going to do? Let's let the user figure it out or something. Not sure what, what was going on there, but that's how you get key switches, um, back, uh, is, is to do those things and then make sure you save your patches after your changes. Otherwise you're going to have to keep doing that. Uh, nice to have sort of thing. Um, let's see if this has it. Yeah, it does. Okay, cool. Uh, this cool idea on these toolkits is this velocity, um, based on, uh, the velocity that you hit on the keyboard, then you get a texture or, or a sound kind of similar, but different to the Evo grid in a way, because it's velocity based, but it would be nice to know kind of where these thresholds are so that we could isolate uh, the velocity to them because it's a lot of guess work um in doing that and that's fine I, I was just nice to be like oh it's this and or if we could click these and it isolates just to them for us um because i know contact has the ability to just do that but if not that's fine uh, we'll figure it out all right let's talk about the strengths and, and um ways we can work with this library so i'm going to play this track um just a, a quick little idea that that i wrote And uh, here's the surprise. Um, that whole idea is just four long notes repeating. Um, that's what I mean by the strength of this library is speed to value is so incredible where you're just focusing on the music aspects and, and other things rather than what patch am I using or, or how is it going to play or, and be interesting and things like that. It comes out very interesting um, right off the bat. Uh, so let's talk about kind of ways of, of integrating it with your uh, template and kind of go from there. I accidentally created that track, sorry. All right, so starting with the synth bass, um, I needed uh, key switches because I have this Max for Live device. Um, Logic already has this in the DAW, so does Cubase uh, with expression maps uh, or articulation maps for Logic. Uh, Ableton Live doesn't, so we have this Max for Live device, and I have that all set up, and then I map that to a knob on my keyboard here, and then I can uh, control uh, as I play, uh, which I, I don't have access to this knob right now, but um, it's under the desk. But I'm gonna use my mouse, and like, so if, if I'm playing this idea, I can start switching the presets. and choose which one I like. And then uh, set my OTT, which is at 30 max, just to keep things um, subtle. And uh, I got a low pass filter here, which this comes from the channel strip. Uh, it's different than the low pass filter that's in contact. Long story short, uh, this is more forgiving. 
and it's good for mixing decisions, getting some of the high frequencies and some of the things I don't want out, um, letting some of it pass through though. And then the low pass uh, that's in the mod wheel, that's not forgiving. That's going to take a lot of things out. And that's great for arrangement, um, for just interest, um, just creative uh, ways of, of setting up the, the patch and the idea. So more musical there with that mod wheel, but uh, more mixing decisions with this one that's a little more forgiving. So that's why I have that. And then... I used contact and I m mapped up uh, this mic volume fader uh, for the mix, uh, which is the sound source itself. And then there's an effects uh, sound source, which is like in the uh, website where it said it went through vintage outboard gear, uh, Euro rack and pedals and things like that. And so sometimes this is very desirable. You're gonna wanna put that in. I have some examples where it's in louder than the mix itself. Um, because uh, there's some fun uh, things going on there. And then uh, we have the reverb that's here. Normally I use uh, Valhalla Room, but I went with uh, Spitfire's reverb for this. Save CPU and, and just easier to use and understand. Um, out of the box, get going. And the reverb is is pretty all right. Um, and then outboard uh, output gain um, from the channel strip just to keep things nice and and mix mix ready if i uh when i add more knobs to my um instrument rack i'm going to uh set up the adsr um you can set up adsr for any of the instruments um you, you got to get there uh through clicking this uh wrench uh to get to them but they are also um assignable and and you can affect those and that's going to be really uh, helpful to you as you're making your musical ideas. All right, so we did that pretty much for each of these uh, instruments. Um, I think the only other difference is I added uh, chords to some of them. And so that sounds really good with this uh, vocal patch uh, where it's a minor ninth, just with hitting one, uh, one key. There we go. So that sounds really good. Does not sound good when you get out of that range, though. Sounds more synthetic um, and, and different. But when you're in the range, it sounds really good. Um, just by hitting that one note. So that's a lot of fun. Um, let's see. And then there's three patches in, in here uh, that, uh, let's go synth pads, that are combinations of. So you have combinations of uh, all these instruments. Uh, they're curated by Spitfire Audio, and they just kind of made their own patches themselves. Gets you there quicker with the idea. Which can be fun. Um, then you have textures, which I think is key mapped a bit because the lower keys are bass. The mid is like vocals and synth. And then up here is like violin. So it's key mapped and you can kind of do some really fun things with that. And another one is the lead, which I have an arpeggiator on. This is also another one of those combinations. And it's got that weird texture on top. Which I filter out a bit because. All right. And more or less, that's um, ways that I've, I've integrated it into um, the template. Um, the violins were, and the cello were really fun to add. And I would say the effects, um, were really awesome. I, I definitely would uh, suggest if you're playing uh, with this library uh, to try the effects uh, um, uh, volumes 
just hear them out, remove the mix and, and open up the effect and, and just hear how some of these instruments sound. It can sound really fun. And then just blend it in. How, uh, however you want to do that. And that's uh, the library. Um, so we'll go full camera here and talk about final thoughts. Uh, this is a fantastic library. It's a lot of fun. Um, if you're looking for a library uh, that gets speed to value, that idea took me roughly five minutes to get going. Um, and I started on a blank template. So if you're starting on blank templates and you're struggling to get started, pull up this library. Um, you're going to get something going pretty quickly. And uh, Daniel James, he has a two-hour video of him just work making ideas left and right uh, using this library along with others. Um, and if he can make ideas for two hours, uh, seamlessly like the way he does in, in that video, um, that shows that it's a great library, uh, for, as an idea generator, just get things going, get things on the page and then go from there, uh, start adding your other libraries in and, um, making the music you were looking to make. So that's, um, one thing it's very easy to use. If you're a beginner and you're trying to get into trailer music, for example, this is a great library to pick up. Uh, it's going to give you some options to kind of, uh, start getting a little bit creative. Christian James has, uh, sorry, Christian Henson has a video out there, um, where he's creating a hybrid, um, trailer to like a Spider-Man, uh, two video game. And, uh, it looked, uh, pretty seamless for him to just kind of go in and, and make updates on the fly and get going. So very easy to use and get set up. Uh, it's really multi effect tool friendly. Um, I, I just showed a few examples there where I can, um, set up like MIDI devices and, and get a lot out of it before it hits contact. And then also afterwards, I didn't add too many examples here, but I did an ambient guitars when we went in that deep dive, uh, guitar rig six, um, throw that on any of these and you're going to get some interesting results. Uh, others like unfiltered audio biome or like, um, sound toys has that effects rack, uh, any multi effects tool, really, you should be able to pull that in and get awesome results or make your own with stock plugins. Um, stock plugins are, are totally fine for this too. All multi effect tools are, are a bunch of little stock plugins. So, um, feel free to, to knock that out too and, and have fun. Uh, you can also use outboard gear. I could, I could, like I did with the ambient guitars, I could plug in my pedal board and, and have some fun results with the Strymon. Uh, this is a very friendly, um, uh, library for that. And then, uh, it's also excellent for layering. Uh, you could add it to like Omnisphere, um, again, picking on Daniel James, but his video, he was layering with all these other libraries and it sounded really good. Spitfire libraries are going to sound really good with it. I could probably make a really fun, uh, song with um, the ambient guitars library we went through the other day and and this as well British drama toolkit uh, the new one just came out uh, I don't have it yet but you could add that you could add the old one so many things you can do with this library there's labs um, all the free Spitfire audio uh, libraries that they're giving uh, away uh, any of those could be really good candidates um, Clang is another series by another company um, Blanking on the name, cinematic music, maybe. I forget who who's making those, but Clang series. Uh, look that up. Those are free libraries too. They, they're kind of similar to Labs. Those are also really awesome um, to set up and, and work. So a lot of great options for you to get off the ground and get running. Uh, I would maybe wait for a sale on this library, um, but again, even 30% off. Uh, if this is something you're looking for, that's a pretty good deal, I think. Um, otherwise, Spitfire does have the 40 to 50% offs all the time. Um, just throughout the year, you just got to wait for it. So if you're patient, uh, you're good to go. Uh, that's going to be it for today. I hope this video uh, inspired you in some ways where you can either pick this back up again and, and try some ideas with this library, or if you're new and you're looking to see if this is one that's interested to you, that you got some details here to help you make your decision. Uh, more to come. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, if uh, this helped you out at all, and we'll see you next time.